Follow the flow. What happens after you hit the silver handle? It all starts here. And here. And here. And, of course, here. Every day, the nearly half million residents and businesses in Central Contra Costa Sanitary District service area produce about 45 million gallons of wastewater. And all of it flows through 1,500 miles of sewer lines to our treatment plant in Martinez. Most of it by gravity alone, an amazing engineering feat when you think of the hills and valleys in central Contra Costa. Treating millions of gallons of wastewater every day is a very complex process. It involves hundreds of functions and thousands of pieces of equipment, all connected to a central computerized control system. This system controls and monitors pump operations, water levels, chemical doses, temperatures, pressures, and a variety of other functions. Trained operators monitor this system 24 hours a day to ensure everything is functioning properly. Also at work behind the scenes is the staff of the district's laboratory who test the wastewater at every stage of treatment, from the moment it enters the plant until it is discharged as effluent into Sassoon Bay. Each year, lab staff perform more than 15,000 tests to make sure that all local, state, and federal regulatory requirements are met and that the marine environment remains safe and protected. When wastewater does enter the plant, it flows through bar screens where rags, trash, and debris are raked out of the sewage. This debris is ground up and returned to the process flow. The screened wastewater is pumped into aerated tanks where grit, usually sand and eggshells, settle out to the bottom of the tanks, which is then removed, dewatered, and taken to landfill for disposal. The wastewater next moves to primary sedimentation. Fats, oils, grease, and vegetable matter, together known as scum, float to the surface where the scum is skimmed off and pumped to an on-site furnace. Sludge, primarily organic material, settles to the bottom of the tank where it is scraped into troughs and then pumped to a centrifuge for dewatering. Approximately 50% of the solids and 35% of the organics are removed during this primary treatment process. The centrifuge removes water from the sludge, which is then pumped to the furnace for incineration. From the primary sedimentation tanks, Wastewater, containing dissolved solids and organic material, is pumped to secondary aeration basins, where it mixes with bacteria in an oxygen-rich environment. The bacteria break down organic material in the wastewater into CO2 and water. The wastewater then flows into secondary clarifiers, where the bacteria sink to the bottom of the tanks as sludge. A portion of this sludge is pumped off to be mixed with primary sludge, dewatered by centrifuge, and then incinerated. The remaining bacteria-rich sludge is returned to the secondary aeration basins to reseed incoming wastewater and continue the biological breakdown of organics in the wastewater. At this stage, water that comes off the top of the secondary clarifiers has had more than 95% of its impurities removed. The wastewater is then disinfected passing through an array of ultraviolet lamps. The UV rays break down the DNA in any remaining bacteria, destroying their ability to reproduce and survive. Most of the disinfected wastewater is then discharged to Sassoon Bay through a 72-inch wide, four-mile-long pipe that ends 1,300 feet offshore near the Venetia Bridge. The portion of treated disinfected wastewater that is not sent to the bay is sent to our recycled water plant, where it is filtered and further disinfected before being used for plant processes, landscape irrigation, and local industry. But there's more. The raw sludge, the activated sludge, and the scum, dewatered and sent to the furnace, become a source of energy for the treatment process. A four-story furnace, fueled by methane from a nearby landfill, incinerates 200 tons of this wet sludge every day, reducing it to just 14 tons of sterile ash, which is trucked to a commercial fertilizer maker and used as soil amendment. Heat from the furnace 
is piped to a waste heat boiler that produces steam. The steam is then piped to a turbine which drives a blower to produce oxygen-rich air in the secondary aeration basins. The Central Contra Costa Sanitary District was founded in 1946. Many changes have occurred since then. The size, population and characteristics of our service area, the processes and technologies we use to collect and treat waste water, the environmental awareness and associated tightening of water quality regulations, the customers who use our services and the people who provide them. What hasn't changed is our unwavering commitment to our mission of protecting public health and the environment.